Hey everybody. So it's been a week and I've been uh, I've been pretty busy with other things and I haven't had a whole lot of time to work on my VR game. But that doesn't mean I didn't accomplish a ton of stuff. So first thing I want to show you is I wish I could show you my desktop on my computer because actually let's see if I can do that. I'm going to go into the old Aki. And I know I usually don't show you this part of it anymore because it takes a little while for things to link up. But um, I have it on good authority that things are going to be pretty cool this time. So, no, I can't look directly at my desktop, uh, but I can look at the, the windows that are open. So that doesn't really help me. But you'll see uh, right over here where it says Purgatory. Play again. That's because I don't have to open Unity anymore to play this game. I can just click that button. And anybody else who has this installed on their computers could also do the same thing. The only things you need in order to do that is Purgatory installed on your computer. You need an Oculus Quest headset. I'm using the Quest 2. I believe it'll work with Quest 1 and pretty much any PC VR um, compatible headset. Um, and I will have this available for the PlayStation as well. Um, I have the option to make it for PS4 and PS5, so I'll likely do both. Um, so... If you are interested in playing any of those versions, let me know, and they will be receiving regular updates. Um, now, I'm not sure how that works with sending updates to you and having them automatically update. It might be something more along the lines of uh, every couple of weeks I send you a new version and you uh, install the new version and you might have to check your email and find a download link for it. Um, so sorry, no automatic updates right away. But, oh, and that name Purgatory is totally going to change because what I have here is Maproom. Maproom is my product. That is the thing that I'm making for people. And that is the platform, because Maproom is a platform. And that's the platform where all of my maps and the games that go on those maps will be available to download and install. So Map Room is what will be receiving regular updates. Purgatory will also, but they'll be included in the main Map Room update. So any game that you have through Map Room will just get will likely get updated via the Map Room update which means regular updates, like once a week, um, a pretty regular thing. Maybe every time you turn it on. That's how Steam works. That's how a lot of these uh, platforms work, where as soon as you turn it on, it just does an update right from the start because all the games that are housed within it might have their own updates, and this is how it checks. But anyway, I'm going to hit this button, and there it is. Um, now, that V is for VRIF. And that is a company who made some stuff that I'm using. And I will eventually be able to change that. Now, you've seen all these things before. I've got the guns and swords and shells. And I've got all sorts of things in here. Now, I've got... There's some things that have happened differently in the installed version as opposed to the version of this game that sits in Unity. When it sits in Unity, um, like these jetpacks were in my in the rings here. They were in my holsters, and they were also flat. I don't know why Unity did that. When they existed within Unity, these were flat. They were like pieces of paper. It was real weird. They are better now, which means that it was a Unity problem and not a me problem. So, that's cool. Now, sure, having, uh, having this game on my desktop as a thing that I can download and share, yeah, that's real cool and all, but there's more to it than that. 
I've been real busy in the last two days. I've only had two days this week to work on anything here. But the buttons have changed. Now, this is the purgatory map, and I will eventually get the word purgatory back on there. And this is the stuff for... Now, this is the map room exit button. This will close the game. And it works. I've tested it a few times. It's pretty flawless. Um, now, race one. This is a teleporter. These buttons will teleport me to specific locations uh, where I have things set up. Now, I created these teleport locations so that I can easily start and end races. Um, there's also a teleport location for here, and it'll bring you right back here. But until I have this UI floating around with me and able to turn on and turn off with a button, it's going to be stuck to walls. So you have to actually get to a location that has, um, that has a, a UI. Eventually, this will also be a map. And instead of it just being race one, it'll actually highlight the area on the map where race one is and the name race one or whatever I call it will pop up when you hover over it and you'll be able to click on it and it'll do this. It'll just bring you directly to it. Now, my frame rate is a little, a little worse now that I'm not in Unity. Um, I'm not sure exactly what's causing that. I really do think it has a lot to do with these um, area lights. The In the fire, there's a light in it, and it's called an area light. And it's, uh, it's a volumetric light, which means that as you get further away from it, it's less noticeable. Um, however, there's certain directions in the game that if I'm looking in that direction, my frame rate goes way down. And it tends to be if I am looking in the direction of the castle, my frame rate is low. And you can see the ground is jittering. Like I'm moving a step at a time. That tree should not be moving across like that. But if I turn this way, everything's smooth. If I turn back around, everything starts getting shaky. Now, I'm not sure how visible that all is for you guys. But for me, that's the worst case scenario. So I have to figure out what it is over there that I'm looking at that's causing it. Now, one of the, uh, there's a couple of things that are there that could be causing the issue. Now, if I look over here, like I'm seeing a lot of map, but it's not doing it. Uh, if I get this castle to my back, and I look across all that, do I still get it? Because that will tell me if it's the castle itself. All right, so I'm getting a little bit of it right there. But no, I'm moving pretty smooth. But if I look at the castle, do I still move smoothly? That's pretty smooth, but it's... I'm I'm having a real hard time finding out what's actually causing it. Because I can fly around the castle, and I don't have a whole lot of frame rate drops. Like, there were a few. So I was originally considering that maybe it was these objects. But I can stand here and look at them, and it doesn't cause too many problems. Like, I'm not losing frames. Everything's moving the way it's supposed to. But it gets to where if I'm over here and I do that same movement, frame rate starts dropping. So I think I'm going to have to delete some things over here. Okay, frame rate drop like that. Frame rate drop right there. Frame rate drop. It's still dropping frames on the rotation. So it could, 
it could even be the zero point. Because from here, I'm not looking at the zero point and everything's moving nice and smooth. I get to here. It's still pretty. Oh, it jiggled a, li a little there. So it seems like whatever's causing my problems is right in here. Now, that's actually. That makes me think that maybe there's something over here that's bad. Because this was an original spot that I put together. And there's always a chance that I left some glitchy thing here that actually causes a problem. Look at the little puddle of water that's moving down here. Oh, it's so cute. That's part of the ocean. I kept that there so that I would know how far down sea level was. Even when I'm in the higher terrain of the map. But so, I said I had some cool things to show you today. And I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna make good on that. And I'm gonna show you some cool things. But first, I'm gonna start with showing you something you've already seen. Because, uh, it's important that we do that. So, I'm gonna load this here World Jetpack, World Circuit Jetpack Race. And it is out there, and there's no names on this board because it's a brand new game that no one has played yet. Now, I'm also pretty sure that my scoreboard doesn't work. So, I've also noticed that it disappears. And another thing I've noticed is that the locations on these buttons, they tend to change. And... They shouldn't change because they're set to an actual object. And that object doesn't change. It sits right where it was sitting the whole time. And then I'm supposed to transport to the object. And when I click on map room the second or third time, sometimes I end up way out in the ocean. And that's frustrating. So I'm not sure what's going on there. And we'll explore it. Uh, a little closer to the end of the video because we're in Unity and I can't easily just restart the game for you guys. So this, the frame rate issue is actually kind of a big deal when you're doing these high speed races. Like your reflexes rely on being able to see and process the information. But when it gets like this, so many things are happening at the same time that uh, you lose the continuity a vision and so your brain can't even figure out where the ring is and where you are and how your momentum is carrying you from one point to another and so you lose track of where you are luckily the all the physics happen at a at a set rate that no matter what the physics will always happen gravity works at the same speed no matter what if you're moving you're moving um, however, your ability to see those things does slow down and that's what we're experiencing here. And so it's thrown me all over the place. Now, once I get this frame rate issue figured out, this is going to be a much cooler race, but like this spot right here is almost impassable because of the frame rate. It gets so bad. I can't even tell what's going on. I even remember the very first day I noticed a frame rate drop in this game. And I want to say that it has to do with that skyscraper. So I'm likely going to get rid of that. I haven't used it for anything. It was more like I was just learning how to build things. But that was the first day when I saw the frame rate drop. Also, that was a couple of days after I made the castle. I made the castle and then I went straight over and made the skyscraper and then started making the jetpack race. So the frame rate drops were happening before the jetpack race existed. So I have to f feel like it is related to an object that happened with those early constructions um, or a piece that I brought into the game 
uh, an object that I brought into the game that maybe isn't um, agreeing with itself. And so it's causing some things to go haywire, but not sending an error message. That's the biggest headache of all this is, sure, my frame rate's dropping because something is happening wrong, but I'm not getting any error messages about it. So the computer thinks everything is happening right. And that's problematic. Um, but it is cool to know that this is officially now a piece of software. This isn't just a thing that I have saved in a game builder. This is actually a game. It has, um, it has a high score leaderboard. It has a scoring system. It's just time right now, but so you can get a good score or a bad score. Um, and you can exit the game. So there's a start, there's a stop, there's a, an actual uh, object to the game. There's things to do now. Um, if I had this frame rate issue figured out and maybe one or two more races in here, I could release this game as, uh, as a first version of it. As I could at least put it out in beta and get some beta testers on it and maybe start looking into investors so that I can go on to the next stages of the of development uh, for map room because map room is the big product everything else is just stuff you do in map room and yeah map rooms gonna get an upgrade at some point uh, you'll have more space and you'll have uh you know separate rooms in there so this is the finish line we have just concluded the race and i got a 26340 which is um terrible that's that's a real bad score but i was talking the whole time now the best score i've gotten is 223 seconds and of course that score is not saved on a scoreboard but that's because my scoreboard is super janky, just like apparently everything else in this game right now. Um, I don't think the frame rate was this bad yesterday. It might behoove me to, uh, to restart my computer at some point. So, mm, it did not show up. That score that we just got should be on this leaderboard here. Now, when I clicked on this button here, the other race went away. It's gone. It turned off and it purged all of its records of what had happened. In theory, in a perfect world, that's what happened. So we have triggered the next race and I haven't started it yet. Um, I could go back to race one. I could just click on that button and teleport there. And if I'm real lucky, it would get me there. And if I'm even more lucky, I'd be able to click on the race two button once I'm over there and teleport back. So let's just see if it works. Because sometimes it does nothing. Sometimes it drops me in a random spot and sometimes it takes me exactly where I was going. I've had situations where teleporting to this room, I've ended up in the floor and I'm just stuck there. So, Apparently, there's a lot of things that can go wrong, and I am not good at figuring out what they are yet. But I've only had about 20 minutes to work with this whole teleporting thing, so I've got some time to figure it out. Uh. Okay, it dropped me in the ocean as far away as possible. See, I honestly don't understand why it would do that. There's... There's no good reason for it um, because the object it's teleporting me to has set um, has set coordinates. It's not moving. So it shouldn't freak out about where I am. The only thing I can think is that my player controller, is nested inside of a parent object. 
and that parent object is what's being teleported. And I wonder if my player character has a different set of coordinates uh, as the game goes on. As I move around, is the player character actually what's moving and the nested parent object is actually staying stationary? Because that could be what's happening. And if that is what's happening, that might explain a lot of the other headaches I've had with getting this uh, uh, character controller working properly. As far as, like, my player height. And, um, like, I currently don't see the thing that is supposed to be the glowing orb of my feet. Which I do find at other times. When the game's off and I'm looking at my character, it does that. But anyway, we'll move on because that's just me talking to myself about things that may or may not be right and wrong and going correctly and going incorrectly. But anyway, we are back here. And this is the room where you start race two. And I know what you're thinking, but Chris, you have to make race two in order to start it. How are you gonna start a race you haven't made yet? And to that, I say, what do you mean I didn't make a race yet? Here's a second race. Now it took me th two months to make the first race. That was a lot of time, a lot of effort, and uh, I did a lot of good work. I learned a lot of stuff and you know, that was two months well spent learning how to make a race. Well, yesterday I sat down and decided to make a second one. So I made this one in one 15 hour session yesterday. I took some breaks, um, but it was a long session. And I've also, during that session, I figured out how to go even faster with making this race or these races. So my next one will be even quicker. Um, so the the main idea in Map Room is that games like the, the Jetpack Race will be able to be added to any map that is uh, uploaded into the Map Room database. Um, so you have the map room server and you'll be able to download different maps that you want to play in. They're user generated maps. They could be, uh, they could be like, you know, you have a really great, uh, level artist and they're making, they're making maps for map room and they upload them in there. You pay to download their map and then they can put games on them using the materials that I've used to create the games originally. So they'll be able to take these, uh, these checkpoints and put them, oh, check this out. First time ever that my rings are floating in the air and I get stuck on it. This is really, really hard. This is maybe the hardest part of the whole game so far is this one spot. And I've nailed it a couple of times, but it's one of those things where you got to practice it and you got to figure out what movements are going to work. Um, this race has a whole lot of different stuff than I had in the other. Even though it looks largely the same, there's a lot more turns and they come at you much more quickly. And some of them are blind turns. I tried to make it so that... Uh, so that as you go through a ring, the next ring that you have to go through becomes very apparent. You know, you can easily see, even before you go through a ring, you know which one's coming after it. Um, so I ended up having to put all these rings really close together just for that. And so this leg of the race, uh, you can, f on average, I finish the second race about 20 seconds faster than the first race even with the same number of rings. Now, because I used the same script for one race as the other, I went with the same number of rings. 
Now there were some different ways that I could have coded that so that it would have auto configured the number of rings and I could have put however many I want in it. But until I, uh, until I sit down and write that out, I, uh, I decided that I would just go with um, the regular 225 rings. Which it turns out the 225 rings is a nice long race. It's a lot of turns. It's a lot of stuff going on. And it keeps you occupied for a little bit. Wow, I was lucky. Um, it keeps you going for a while. And, you know, there's a lot of room for error. There's a lot of uh, opportunities to do better. And by the time you've done the entire course four or five times, you've got a pretty good idea of where it is. But you haven't memorized it yet because it's really long. These courses are really long, so it takes a while to memorize them. So this is going to be where you go to uh, start the third race, which I have not yet begun. Um, we were over there when we started this race. So we've gone really far, but not really in comparison to the distance uh, traveled in the first race. The first race... Um, is a lot of long straight shots. And this one tends to curve around itself. Wow, I didn't even get as good a score. On, oh, no, I did score better on this than the first race. Uh, I think I got 261 on the first one and 257 on this one. But it's because I'm talking and I'm not as good at racing when I'm talking. Also, the frame rate is killing me. So I've got to get that figured out. I got to find out what is gumming up the works and uh, and get it out of the game. I'm to the point where if it's that castle that's causing this frame rate drop, I will delete the castle. I do not care. I will make it go away. So, yeah, clean frames, clean frames. Get over here. It's dirty. It's the castle. If I'm looking toward the castle, it does that. Let's try it from this mountain. Now, the thing is that the zero point is where I just was. Straight down from there was zero. That was the highest point in the whole game. And if you go as low as you can through the world, that'll be it. So I got clean, steady frames, clean, steady frames. It gets janky as soon as that comes into my periphery. That's when everything goes to hell. Clean, clean, clean. Oh, it starts getting janky right there. So it's clean. Nope. Uh, yeah, it dropped a couple. But super smooth. I really like it. Janky. Super smooth again janky I really do think it's the castle let's try it from another mountain because the castle is so close to the zero uh, it's hard to know if it's the zero point causing it or if it's the castle so I have to check it from a bunch of different spots so from here it's a little droppy. A little. It's pretty droppy. It might just be because of this tree, though. Trees tend to do that if you're real close to them. So maybe that was not the best place to perform that task. Let's try it over here. Smooth. Janky, smooth. That tree is causing me some. Or, well, that's a lot of trees. There are a whole lot of them there. So it could even be the number of trees by the castle. But I don't think so. Let's come down here and try it. We won't even be on a mountain. We'll be on the ground. And we will check our frame rate from here. Smooth. It gets a little janky down here. It's fine looking that way, but everything over here is no good. 
what if I come over here and do the same thing? Smooth, janky, smooth, janky. We'll get up at the top of this mountain and see what happens here. So there were a couple of smooth spots, but for the most part, this is just a janky location. So I don't believe that it has anything to do with the distance that's being rendered. I have a feeling that it has to do with this mountain. Because this mountain used to be something. This was my very first something. Back when I was making all my mistakes when I didn't even realize they were mistakes. I mean, yes, I knew everything was a mistake then. But I didn't know what they were or why they were. They just were. So, I have something to fix over here and I need to figure out what. It could just be that I, I could have left something inside this mountain. And there was a lot of really janky stuff going on back then. Um, however, I've been through my list of game objects, and I don't recall seeing anything left behind from then. Anyway, that's enough about frame rates. I really wish that it wasn't an issue because this game looks really good when everything's working right. Like, like I really like the, the resolution. I like how everything looks in it. It's a really attractive game. Well, the stuff way over there is. The stuff over here, I haven't really worked on yet. I haven't actually done anything anything with this i put a tree down and a couple of spots but so this bridge this was the second thing i made ever in this game the first thing i made was a castle that was over there and it's no longer here <gasps> oh yeah so check this out so you can't just go through a, a mountain right you can't it, it's a thing but i actually removed a section of this mountain I cut a hole in it so this pipe could go through. However, in the uh, in the built version of this game, the hole isn't there anymore. It fills it up. And that's real weird because I can still walk through it. Right? And then when I get over here, it's closed again. Now, I didn't tell it to be closed. I didn't do anything of the sort. It just is. And now I need to figure out why and how. And is that supposed to be that way? Is it broken? Or is that something that I should be able to use? Should I be able to use that functionality in other ways? Because that's a cool secret passage uh, method. And so if that's a thing, I'm going to do it. Um, now I do have another spot right here where I cut through the mountain and let's see if it, see, this is no good because how am I supposed to have holes through the terrain in my game if the game just fills them back in? Like that's not okay. I need to figure out why that's happening. I noticed it. Um, yesterday when I made my first build of this. Oh, and I've already done an update of that first build. This is the, the second build. It automatically re uh, replaces my original file. So whenever I create a new one, I'm not sure if it's just updating or if there's something Unity knows to do to update this file uh, as it sits on my computer. But... I didn't 
manually update it. I didn't hit a button that said update. I hit a button that said build. And it did not ask me to first click on the old one or indicate in any way that I was replacing the old one. It just asked me what folder I wanted to put it on. And I was like, you know what? Let's put it on the desktop. That's where I put the last one. It didn't ask me what I wanted to call it. It just took the file name and that's the name of the game. It automatically did that. So I have to figure out if that means when I send out an update, is that automatically updating? Also, if I send that file, if I send someone this game as a Google Drive link and they download it, does it automatically install when they click on it? Like, cause I didn't create an installer. However, this is installed on my computer. I did, however, and this is the one reason I'm not gonna send this game to anybody just yet. I looked for the uninstall. And this doesn't, this game doesn't show up in my list of apps. It doesn't show up at all. So I can't uninstall it. And I need to figure out how to do that. Because if I can't uninstall it, then you can't uninstall it. And if you can't uninstall it, I should not send it to you. So I've got work to do before I can send this out to anybody, even for basic testing purposes. Because I don't want to get it stuck on anyone's computer. That That's annoying and it's irresponsible. So I will be better to my beta testers than that. And I will make sure that when I send them a, a file, it's something that they can install and uninstall. I'm really mad that there isn't an uninstall file for this. Um, and I do need to look up some things about that. I, I, I glanced over the documentation for it yesterday, but I'm doing a million things right now. And so I was like, ah, I'm not going to need that just yet. That's like a next week thing. Um, so I'm going to test out that fast travel again to see if it's going to put me where I want to be. So we're going to see if this one down here will take us to the map room. Now I eventually will get this, uh, this fast travel as a thing that can pull up. Uh, without having to go to a location to find a, um, uh, a terminal to do it at. Um, you know, it'll just be a menu that pops up in front of your face. So let's go to map room and see what's what. No? Uh, that's the other thing is I'm... The trigger is the same button as the uh god it put me as far away from one of those as possible um the trigger is the same button i use for the jetpack which can make it hard to hit the buttons on the ui because the jetpack drags you along and moves the hand that's pointing so you can be pointing at the correct spot in the UI and you pull the trigger to press the button, but your jetpack ignites and you end up going somewhere else. So let's see. Ooh, it flattened right back out as soon as I put it in there. It's weird. All right. So uh, give me a hand there. I have a body now. Yeah. See, his hand is supposed to do what this one's doing, but it's not. So we're going to go to the map room. And it worked. Hooray. So I'm going to exit and come right back in. Now, you guys aren't going to go anywhere. You'll still be here when I do. Here we go. And now we've exited the game. And we were in there for about a half an hour. We're going to open it right back up. Now, I don't have a save game yet. That's not a thing that I've uh, 
It does exist in the game, but I'm not using it. Ooh, there is something I wanted to see, though. If I get here quick enough, I can watch this car. Oh, I don't have any jetpacks. No. But there's a car over here that's going to fall off a, a cliff. Where is it? It should be right over here. And we're going to get to watch it fall. Because it always does. There it is. So that's a car that I, I placed up here a while ago. And I didn't realize that I was placing it on a not flat surface. Because in 3D, when you're far away, everything looks the same. And it turns out that this thing actually manages to roll itself off. And down the mountain every single time. And it always ends up in a different place down there because, of course, the physics cause it to run a different course every time. Oh, you know what's great, though? I can hop in this car and maybe get to uh, my jetpacks faster. So the car is really hard to use, mainly because my character is super broken okay it's really hard to grab the steering wheel okay so we're gonna go for a drive in our automobile and maybe we can get somewhere pretty quick Ooh. It's faster than walking. Not a lot faster, but at least some. Come on. So that's a problem with the car is because my body stays at the same orientation, um... If the vehicle tips at all, my uh, my body doesn't tip with it and it changes where I'm steering and it causes me to always be going uphill. And it's been a problem because that means if you're driving in a spot with a hill on either side, you're just stuck. So let's see if I can get out of here. Nope. It's just about impossible. Like, I'm really reaching my hands as far as I can. And that sucks because I only have so much room in my house to swing my arms places. And I'm really... Uh, I don't like smashing cough, uh, cups of coffee off of my uh, off of my table, which totally happens when you're doing this, especially with the car, because the car, you're like flying all over the place. You don't have any sort of control over where you're going, and so you're constantly losing uh, your feeling of where you are in the world don't go down there don't do it if you go down there you're stuck forever uh, wow that was fortunate one of the times when it's okay that the car can uh only go up the hill come on I'm steering as hard as I can. It's really pretty difficult. I just wish that this was a little easier. And it's it's because the there's a script 
attached to this vehicle and it's called the player move or it's called the moving platform script and it's supposed to be um it's supposed to make it so that the platform that is the base of this car if i um wow look at that if i stand on it it's supposed to um I'm supposed to become a part of it. As soon as my feet touch it, I, all of its coordinates are supposed to affect mine. So if it rotates, I'm supposed to rotate. If it moves forward, I'm supposed to move forward at the exact same speed. Um, and it's called a moving platform script, and they're really a common thing. But my player character is having the hardest time activating the is grounded um method uh to tell it that it's actually on there so i can i can operate the vehicle and do all the controls but i can't actually stay on the car and until i get that sorted out that car is useless to me once i do have that sorted out car racing will be the next jetpack racing um, so that's likely going to be something that I start working on really soon. I want to get a couple more races, uh, put together right now. We have two and I'd like to get to four or five races before I move on, because at least with the races, I have something that I can release as a beta. And that's, that's my big goal right now is to just get something out there, um, that people can play. And so I got to get my frame rate down. I've got to get uh, two or three more races. I've got to still uh, put terrain textures on and finish developing the terrain everywhere. I want to come up with a couple of more styles of buildings. Right now I have two main buildings that I'm, uh, you know, using multiples of. The The first is the uh the cottage that we were in when we uh when we were doing the jetpack race when we where all the buttons were that was the cottage and so i'm using the cottages as places to start the races i've also got these cliff side hanging homes and they're they're almost like a tree fort except it's you know a cliff fort uh and it just hangs off the side of a cliff I've got nine of those in the game, and I want to come up with a couple of more uh, variations on housing. Um, I want there to be several different versions, and you can buy a house in the game with in-game currency, uh, you know, once that is a thing in my game. Right now, it's not. I have a lot of other things I'm working on right now, so game currency has kind of taken a back burner um i am oh you'll notice that there's a health bar that's a thing that's my health bar and it works when i press the uh i have an ouch button that i programmed into my player character into the the player controller and and that's there just wow look at that thing it's not enjoying that uh you know what i wonder if maybe it's just the wood in here well, no, because it was doing it before I changed it to the wood. I also have thought maybe it's, you know, the blue domes. But it's hard to know. Um, I've also thought maybe it was this laser because, you know, that just shoots off forever. And it's right about the spot where I was looking when everything went wrong. And that makes me wonder if... There's a chance that's what's causing it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go take this thing and we're going to shove it somewhere else. We're going to put it in a different location and see if that location then becomes the glitchy one. Cool idea, right? I'm really surprised I hadn't thought of it before. So, we will see if this is what's causing it. Although, 
It's not causing any frame rate drops right now. So we're going to set it right down here in this green patch. So we will always know where it is in case we decide we want to come back for it. So we will leave that there. Uh, nice and smooth, glitchy. Now, I'm not convinced that it's the amount of stuff in my field of view that causes the frame rate drops because looking over there, I'm looking at m more stuff than I was when I was in the spot that was causing the issue. So like it should be like, it's definitely whatever is right there. And that's the castle. So there's something in the castle that's causing an issue. <laughs> now I could spend an entire day just dragging objects over or uh, deleting objects until I find what's actually causing the issue. Frame rate drops, frame rate drops, frame rate drops, clean. That was clean though. I just flew over that castle without dropping frames. Hmm. It could also be what they, uh, they call the smooth locomotion script. Wow, that was smooth, smooth. Let's try it on this side. Now on this side, it's still pretty smooth. Wow, not as smooth as that though. I'm still dropping a few frames. The smooth locomotion script definitely bugs it out. So it gets worse when I'm trying to turn. And it was definitely bad on that corner. Now the smooth locomotion script also has the smooth rotation script. The smooth rotation script, uh, that is a, a labor intensive thing. Um, there's almost no scenario where I can use that without dropping frames. So this tends to, this seems to be the most laggy spot. So let's see what's causing it. Let's see where I'm getting it. Okay, I'm thinking it's the blue. Well, no, because it's there. Mm. What if I go inside it? Is it glitchy in here? Not really, like not any more glitchy than anywhere else. It's actually pretty smooth. I mean, you can see the the status bar, my health bar, uh, it jiggles. It gets worse when I'm here, so. Hmm. 
Hmm. Yeah, it's hard to know. I mean, it could even be this little golf ball here. Whatever it is, it's on this side. Something over on this side is causing it. Because that's smooth. You get a little frame rate droppy there. I initially thought maybe it was these little buttresses but i don't think that's the case it could actually even be the shadows around here although i i did something today called baked lighting where you take your lighting and you bake it you basically just make it so that it's not constantly rendering changes in the lighting um, the shadows are all still here, but, um, like, moving objects don't have shadows. Like, I barely have, I have a reflection, maybe? But that's it. I don't have a shadow. There is no shadow from me or my objects. So, m all the shadows that are in the world right now are permanent. I wonder if my trees are moving in this non-unity ver- Yes, they are. They're working just fine. Trees work great. I really like my trees. I gotta f narrow down that frame rate drop. I even thought maybe it was this place because the textures are all messed up. Oh, that thing shows up every- 45 minutes or so. I mean, it could be the inn, but it all works until I point that way. It could be a certain kind of tree that's causing it. It could be, there's any number of things. It could even be the water that's causing it. And it would take me several hours to deactivate all these water. Uh, all these ponds and the ocean, but the the frame rate didn't get worse as I added the ocean. So far, nothing. I can't pinpoint anything that made the frame rate worse. It was just kind of bad in the beginning, and I didn't really notice it. I think because, you know, there were no textures on anything. I was just moving around and if something glitched, it really wasn't super noticeable. But now it is because I'm actually like trying to do stuff in here. I'm trying to, you know, fly a race course and, you know, dropping frames during a racing game is really bad because you can't see where you're going. And like, it, it'd be fine out here unless my race, you know, had turns in it, which mine has a lot of double back, switch back turns, and you end up having a lot of problems because of it. Bad frames, bad frames. Good frames. Not even really. It's getting better. Now it's perfect. This was the first area that I made. Well, one of them. That was the first. So I, I'm i pretty convinced that this is all due to something that I stupidly did in the very beginning of my time building this. Because I, I, I do lots of stupid things, and that was just, you know, one of them, apparently. And I'm not sure what it was. I may not find out at all.
But yeah, it's, I don't lose many frames when I'm just like turning myself. But if I use the smooth locomotion uh, or the smooth rotation button, like if I steer myself by spinning in my chair, nothing bad happened. Like it's losing a couple frames here and there. Actually, it's losing quite a few right now. Um, but it doesn't jitter when I rotate my head around. But if I use my joystick, which is on this hand, if I use my joystick to rotate, it's definitely bad. So what that means is my frame rate is independent, uh, or my head updating, my head rotation updating is independent of my frame rate which means that's happening in what they call the fixed update. That's where all the physics happens. Now, the smooth locomotion feels like it's happening within the regular update, and that happens once per frame. Instead of being an even 100 frames a second like the physics update, the regular update is just whatever your computer can handle. And so when it's rendering all these shadows and stuff, that happens within the regular update. So that happens one frame at a time at whatever your computer's uh, operational frame rate is um, at the time, because that number is always changing. Um, you know, if you have 50 enemies coming in all at once, your, your computer is going to have to work harder than if it only had one or two coming. And that will cause a frame rate drop. So uh, this is a section that had a race in it. These were all, this was full of rings. Um, man, I remember when I first started doing this stuff. Like, I feel like I'm moving so slow right now. Um, normally I'm moving a bit faster. And I remember before I had any rings and I was just like, whipping around these paths thinking wow yeah i'm gonna be really good at this and uh you know i was like oh i can't wait to have some you know find a way to turn this into a real race i'm gonna have to put up some rings or something and well i did that and then i got good at it but yeah this whole place looks really cool even without the rings like, I really love this spot. This is one of my favorites. It's got these uh, these little wooden... I'm, I'm referring to them as boardwalks because they're not necessarily a bridge because they are attached at one end. There's only one exposed edge on these instead of, like, a, a, a bridge would have two exposed sides. And a dock would have three exposed sides. So these are different. These are boardwalks. Now this one's a bridge. As the boards are going this way. Now on the boardwalks back there, the boards went the other way. They were horizontal. And I did put thought into that before I did it. Because I was like, well, if I'm going to make this, I'm going to make it like this. But if I'm going to make the other one, I'm going to make it that way. And so that's how I did it. I did what I thought I would do if I was an actual builder. Or if I was just walking across the bridge, what would I expect it to look like? And that's what I made. Wow. In the beginning, this was as fast as I could go in my game. This was top speed. And I did not have, I didn't have jumping. I didn't have sprinting. And so anything I did while I was testing my game had to happen at this speed. And that really kept me from making a lot of stuff because I, you didn't need very much stuff when it took you forever and a day to get anywhere. Wow, that was bad frame rate. This is really, really glitching. This is not happy frames. I definitely have to get this figured out. Because I want my game to be fun for people to walk around in, and it won't be if it's jerking around like this. Like, there, that's a little better. 
That's nice and smooth here. But yeah, for a while back there, it was real bad. It's probably just because I was facing a direction that had stuff. Probably facing the castle again. Now, I have some pretty steep paths in this game. But, um, I think that's going to be okay because the player can definitely climb them. There's nothing in this game that the player character cannot climb. I am almost certain that I made everything climbable. Which is fine. I thought about making it a little different and having, um, you know, lowering the possible angle for climbing. Um, but I just haven't done it yet. And the further I get in the game without doing it, the more stuff I have built that relies on me being able to walk the way I'm walking now. So I'm probably not going to worry about fixing that because it wouldn't serve me any real purpose. But yeah, so there's, there's miles of paths in this game already. And I've gotten really quick at making them. Um, I do have to come back and tidy them up because the method I'm using to create them now, it does a much nicer job out of the box. But the, uh, the old method, I was already there doing cleanup because it was such a mess to do that I always ended up doing the final touches and just getting it nice. And now I'm not doing the final touches. I'm just like blowing through and getting a ton of it done. And I keep forgetting to come back and actually like fix these edges and stuff. And some people might be like, oh, they're fine like that. And no, they're not. Um, there's much better that can be done here. And I will do it. So one of the things that you probably did not notice when we went through the second race was that it actually goes through an underpass. Now, I don't have the underpass built yet. Well, I don't have the overpass built, but I have the under section. We're going to jump over it right now. We just jumped over the under. Because this race, race number two, it actually goes around like this. And it doubles back over itself. It does a, a whole loop goes all the way around this uh, this little mountain and it comes through and right here this is where the overpass was so now I just have to put a board across that and call it good and I will soon So our path comes all over here, does a whole bunch of stuff. Comes down there, and this is the first one where I crossed the road. I ran my path across the street here. Oh, and I brought in some of that, uh, the village stone path. And I just kind of peppered it in here in a couple of spots. Just enough so that you could be like, oh, this is an old path. And I'll be like, yeah, real old. Um, but so I made this today. This little patch of greenery in the trees. And I'm trying to come up with a balance for, you know, how I want the rocks to show through. Like, do I want a lot of these little rocky peaks? Wow, my frame rate is super bad right now. Hmm. This is why you hire beta testers. And since I'm not hiring anybody right now, I am my own beta tester. So there was that one spot where the rings were floating in the air. And that was right here. I might have to go turn that race back on because I want to see those rings. I really like the way that got set up and, or I like the way it, it turned out. 
it was a really hard thing to set up because with most of this, with most of these uh, race sections, I'm just building it off of something that's already there. I'm building it off of a path. But when I did the thing that was through, uh, through the air, there wasn't a path there to work with. So I'm going to load this race. And I may actually have to, uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to run the race. Sorry. Here's four minutes of your life. You're not getting back. But so we are in our second, uh, entrance of the game we we started the game in the very beginning and then we left so that we could show that it does indeed have a working exit button um and then we loaded the game back up and it uh we've been in it ever since okay i did not miss that checkpoint i always check if I think I missed a checkpoint, I will totally look back at it before I even start going for the next one. Because if you go through a checkpoint right now, there isn't a way to correct it. You have to restart the whole race. And I did notice on race one, my restart race button is not resetting the rings. And that's a problem. So I've got to go through and figure out why that's happening the way it is because it was working fine before I set up the second race. So I'm wondering what's up with that because I hit a wrong checkpoint um, on race one earlier today. Whoa. Um, yeah, I hit a, a wrong checkpoint on race one earlier. And when I went to reset the race, the fires didn't come back on. And that means that the ra the rings didn't reset. The, the script reset. So it started back at thinking that I had to go through checkpoint number one again. But checkpoint number one didn't reactivate. So I couldn't go through it. And uh, so I have to figure out what's up with that. Now I'm doing all this because I wanted to go through that bridge area again. And here we are. I've I've actually nailed this a couple of times. But that frame rate thing is killing me because you start to get your rhythm and then all of a sudden there's no rhythm anymore. The game disrupts and everything gets lost. So, I've got some work to do on that. The frame rate definitely drops when I go through that and it has every time. Like their location-based frame rate drops. Now, the thing is that when I go through these locations, I'm always facing the same direction I was the time before. So it might not be the location so much as the direction I'm facing, and that location just has a history of me facing that direction. So I think that's probably the case. Because a lot of these spots are fine. Like right here is awesome. This is working wonderfully. I have no issues with this. This is beautiful. I wish the whole game worked like this right here. Because this race wouldn't be hard if my frame rate stayed consistent like this. Like, I'm getting probably 70 to 80 frames a second right now. Now, to be available in the Oculus Quest app store, it has to get 100 frames a second. Uh, and that's not the fixed update, the, the physics one. That's the regular update that's just going at the speed your computer is handling. So I can't run a script that has more stuff going on than it can handle 100 times a second. If I want it to be in the Oculus Store. Now this one can't be in the Oculus Store because... Oculus Store games have to be able to run untethered. Uh, you have to be able to use them in standalone mode. And this game, because of the HDRP graphics, that's what gives me the shadows and the fog, um, the graphics engine I'm using, the HDRP, 
um, is not compatible with the operating system on the Oculus 2 or on the Quest 2. So I've had to rely on my computer's operating system, Windows 11, to handle the uh, the lighting and, well, to play the game. Uh, no part of this is loaded onto my Quest. Now it is loaded into, it's being launched through the Oculus app. So the Oculus app on my computer, on my desktop, is working is funneling the game through and actually if you looked at my tv screen right now uh it's visible what i see here is visible on the screen so um it makes me feel like if i just changed it to keyboard functions this would be a mouse and keyboard game and you could use it just fine um, I have not done that yet, though, because I spent so much time getting it to hook up to the Oculus Quest controllers that I was not making a back door available to use it with mouse and keyboard. But it would be cool, um, and I think it would probably be helpful as far as marketing goes and cross-platform goes if I made it so that regular PC gamers could play this game. They're not going to have nearly as good a time because they're going to be relying on their mouse to do everything. They're not going to have two uh, triggers to hold. They're not going to be able to easily put these in their hands or put them down because you can't just click on them with a mouse. Like you have to, you'd have to equip each hand. Oh, another thing is right now, all the rings from the other race are still active. I did not turn them off. Now, when I end the first race and I start the second one, the second race's rings turn off, or the first race's rings will turn off. However, I made it so that if somebody really wanted to, they could do what I'm doing, and I'm running both races right now. I'll reset one of them. Both of my races are active. Oh, hey, they started back up again, right? So, yeah, both sets of numbers are visible on my screen. So right now, the frame rate hasn't gotten worse because of it either. So that's how I know that it's not the race that's causing the, the frame rate. It's not my race scripts because even with two races running at the same time it's fine it can totally handle it it's handling it maybe better it's handling it easily just as good as it was handling it with just running one race and i've doubled the number of rings i went from 225 to 450 rings uh active in the game right now And it hasn't changed the performance. So that's how I know that the things that I made in this game are not what's causing the problem. So there's something else causing it. Whether it's the distance that has to be rendered or there's some object in the castle that's causing it. Or it could be the castle itself. It could be... Um, well... The, uh, the, the tools I'm using for building uh, structures and even these rings was a tool called Pro Builder. And that's basically a toolbox full of shape tools that you can use. And, uh, you know, you make a bunch of stuff with it. And um, so every object I've made in this that wasn't terrain or trees was made with Pro Builder. And so I'm wondering if maybe just the high number of Pro Builder pieces that make up that castle are what's causing the issue. Because that's a lot of vertices. And they say vertices are what count when 
uh, when talking about performance issues, like the computer, every single frame of the game has to count every angle of every object. And the angles, uh, you know, like what I mean is like if you have a cube, a cube has six sides and six corners and the vertices are the edges. So it counts the edges of shapes. Now, each of these toruses, that's the rings, uh, each of them has like 115 or something different faces, which means that each face has four vertices. See how that adds up really quick? Um, now, the Quest 2, a lot of people say, tops out at around 100,000 vertices. Uh, that it can, you know, maintain 100 frames a second while calculating the locations for 100,000 different vertices. And, and rendering them. Um, I am well over 100,000 at this point. Um, in fact, I probably have close to 60,000 just in the castle. Um, like those domes, those domes are a really good example of a lot of vertices. The blue domes are a ball that has 256 faces and I've removed faces from them so that it's only the top half of the ball because it was a ball and I just removed the bottom half of it one face at a time. Out of the 256 faces, I removed just over half of them to make that dome. And then I made two more smaller domes to go with it. And they each have the same number of vertices and the same number of faces. They're just smaller faces. So we got a 263.23 on one of these races. Now if we uh, come over here, we're right at our race number two. I made sure to start race number two right next to race number one. So we're going to come over here and we're going to exit this race. Actually, do I have the leaderboards right there? Let's reset this and see if anything comes of it. Uh, actually, let's close that. Ooh, I did 281 on that last race, which is fucking bad. But let's see what happens when we go to the map room. Oh, yeah, I think we're in the ocean. No, it dropped us. Um, okay, the map room is right there. You all have never seen it like that before, but we're in the map room and from here, I can actually go a lot of places. Um, I can actually fly around underneath the world. And I can get anywhere from here. Yeah, anywhere in the entire world. I'm above the ocean. This is the ocean as it passes under the world. I found a cool spot earlier where I have a second ocean. Oh! So this is something that I was working on. I haven't seen it from this side before. I'm working on underwater. And that is the inside of a pond. That's what it looks like when you're not in it. And so the idea of this is that it has the texture across the top so that it distorts when you look out, as well as having these floaties uh, floating around underneath. Now, the problem is that nothing underneath is distorting as well. So I have to, you see this white kind of shape here that 
hangs out under here. I need this to be just slightly inside the pond. Um, so that it'll distort the edge. But I haven't been able to make that happen. Because the shape is so complex and you can't really see it when you're working on it. So you try to move one point of it and you didn't actually grab it or you grabbed it too much. And now you have to start over. Like, so I messed with this for about a half a day before I gave up on it. But I will get it working. And that is not the cause of my frame rate issues because it changes when I'm looking at the castle. All right, so we're still under the ground and I'm not coming up yet. That's a road. Which road is that? Oh, I didn't mess with this too much at all. Where does that end up taking me? Did I legit just drop that road somewhere? Oh no, it's the one that goes all the way up. Yep, it goes this way. And there's a little driving area or a parking area up here that I made. Oh, gotta be careful I don't go over it. I'm running out of terrain that is high enough to see things. So I'm going to have to duck back down before I accidentally pop out above. Now from down here, I can actually get across and see if there's anything left in that mountain from my first build. And see if there's anything down there causing issues. So let's go in the mountain. And I don't see anything. This is the spot that I was said uh, was, oh, right there's where it touches the water. Where you get that tiny little puddle on the inside. Well, that's what that actually looks like. So yeah, I'm not seeing anything dangerous down here. I'm not seeing anything that should be causing our issues. Is there anything under the water? No, there's nothing down here. The only thing down here is the map room. And you will be really lucky to find it because it's hard to, what is that? Is that a car? What is that? That's, uh, that's my UI. Okay, so I can see the UI through the fog. As long as I'm high up enough for it. That's great. Now, this is a wall. You could not get through it if you wanted to. But you can see through it because it only, um, it only renders on one side. So this is from the outside looking in, and that's with two walls visible, or invisible. And I actually really like that about it because no matter where you are, you can always see what's inside there, and if somebody was in there, they couldn't see you. It's a one-way mirror, you know? So we're back in here. And I feel like we've probably been in here for quite a while. So I'm going to just do the exit and we will end up back in the Oculus app. Come on. Nope. There we go. Hi. So I'm going to exit the race. Now, it has been a lot of fun. We didn't mess with any guns or anything today. Um, we did hide one out on the beach in a patch of grass, which was fun. But uh, let's do this. We're going to exit the game because we can. And that's that. So now I'm going to disable my Oculus Link. Back out to the main room. And I will double tap the button right 
here, if I double tap this button, it's the little Oculus button, it will show a voice command box that is listening for me to say end recording. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna tap the button two times, the, diag the dialogue box will pop up and I will speak. Here we go. Have a great week, everybody. It will be Tuesday by the time you see this. End recording.